Welcome to the Floor Academy podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hedin, owner of Illustrious Hardwoods in Mesa, Arizona. I want to encourage you all to learn well you earn. We are dedicated to improving this trade by getting you the business education you need. Contractors are great with their hands, not always great at business. We're here to talk the business, let you learn it, and let you become more profitable and successful. This week, I've got David Sandana with me. We will have him introduce himself in just one minute. Uh, I am not prepared because, um, well, you know what? I'm just not prepared because I'm not prepared. Let me let me bust this out here. The Floor Academy podcast is sponsored by Trelama, the trade labor marketplace where businesses can find skilled trade labor such as flooring installers and where flooring installers and other skilled tradespeople can find permanent or project work. You can set up your profile at Trelama.com, T-R-A-L-A-M-A.com, or download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play. And remember, Trelama is always free for skilled tradespeople. All right, David, we uh, we chatted briefly, oh, I don't know, about four months ago now at, uh, at Surfaces. It was nice to meet you. And um, we've kept in touch since then, which is one of the reasons why I love industry events. I don't care what anyone says. They are worth every penny because of the relationships you build. They're absolutely invaluable. That's my take. If you don't like it, I don't care. Uh, So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Give me, you know, who you are, what you do, why you do it, why why you do tile, how long you've been doing it, all that fun stuff. I'm having a little trouble on this end uh, with the internet, it seems like, because it's kind of lagging. Okay. Uh, My internet's kind of lagging here. Okay. Did you hear anything I said? You said, introduce yourself, fun stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Introduce yourself, why why you do what you do, what you do, um, how long you've been doing it. Give me me that background. Okay. Okay. My name is David Sandana. Uh, I've been installing flooring material and tile for nearly 20 years. Um, I'll be 40 this December. So it's been oh, almost as long as I've, I haven't been doing it almost as long as I've been doing it. So I started my company back in 2005. Um, we've been in business ever since. Uh, it's been almost 17 years. May will be 17 years. Okay. Uh, and what was the, what was the reason for getting started on your own? You know, why not? You were probably employed by somebody or you know knowing this industry you were probably a subcontractor even though you were an employee <laughs> and so what was the yeah, what right? was the drive to go out on your own um i got i got to the point where i was doing the installs independently um but i was i was an employee w2 okay uh so what ended up happening was i i i just got to the point where i needed to make more money based on the volume i was producing mm-hmm. and when i asked for i asked for that raise and it it kind of fell on deaf ears and uh it came with like a, a chuckle and uh, the famous last words were if you were worth it i would give it to you and so um at that point i went on my own and we've been 17 years strong at this point now okay now can i add, is that company still in business it's it's a different company now they they had other things happen and but yeah and we're still friends to this day but okay. it, it was it wasn't a bad breakup on my end, but um, you know we're 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 very cordial and friendly, and we we mm-hmm. enjoy each other's company. But okay. it was just, you know, I was young. I was twenty three when I went on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'll be forty here this year, and he was probably twenty nine. Okay, both so both just, young and you know, new at life, and you know, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. It's and that's we we all got to take our path and i think that's what's what's important here right like some people are worker bees and and some people want to forge out on their own and you got to you got to let them go be the queen bee so uh essentially we got to talking and and we were talking you had called me and you were like hey man i got somebody you got to interview and i still want to do that interview um i don't want to spoil it so i'm not going to bring it up but oh. i i um within that interview you were like man i've 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 weathered storms because we got to talking about the economy how can you not these days for the most part but you're like i've weathered yeah, storms and i was like man that's a right there that's a topic it's, it's just it's so relevant right now um 
I started my company. I've been in business for a little over three years on my own, and it's been easy. You know, there's mm-hmm. it, one. I live in a big city. I get it. Phoenix. There's 4.5 million people. Finding a project is going to be easy. I can pick and choose. I can be the expensive guy. Um, but it wasn't always that way. You went through the recession, and you still have a company. You didn't have to shut it down. And so you've seen these ebbs and flows and these price increases come along and all of that stuff. And I haven't had to do any of it. And so while I've been the expensive guy and I've stashed money aside and whatnot, there's got to be insights that some of us need to hear because we've all we've only ever had it easy that man, I, I in my mind, I don't see a pretty picture developing. I see a can that keeps getting kicked down the road and down the road and down the road. And at some point it's going to burst open and explode everywhere. And I, I'm, you know, I'm just kind of waiting for the bottom to fall out. So I want to dig into how, you know, you only had a couple of years. You definitely didn't know the re- that the great recession was coming at that time. And so what was it like? Cause that those were boom years. So what was it like when you, you went out on your own and you were able to just build this company up? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't that that easy, you know. Uh, the boom years, I was at the, the tail end of it, but I, w- I had enough time where I could. Uh, I've seen some things changing, and I noticed that there was a change happening, uh, but I didn't have enough experience to re- realize or pay attention enough to the world economy and interest rates and housing markets and all that stuff mm-hmm. to realize, you know, there's a big issue happening. Um, you know, so I did. I didn't. I wasn't completely blindsided. I saw a change happening, and I was curious about it. But then it happened so quickly, uh, it seemed like everything that happened after um, people started defaulting on loans and all the stuff at the markets, and um, it just started to escalate so fast, people were very reactionary. And naturally, they just pulled back in, stopped spending as much money or any at all. And then you ended up, you know, going through the Great Recession. And there was, you know, varying opinions on how to handle it and all that stuff. And, you know, at the same time, you know, I had... uh, I had a three month old, so mm. it was, it was a super tough time. Yeah. Um, you know, and new business, a couple years old, you know, and, uh, it, it was good, but, um, the first signs for me, we were doing all these new construction homes and they were selling houses for like $450,000 and the whole entire neighborhoods. And I was like, man, how did all these people have this much money? Like, like I can't imagine because where I lived, the houses were a couple hundred thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. Well, up, you know, just 10 miles north, they were 400,000 or 500,000. And, and you couldn't imagine a half a million dollar house. You're just like, oh, man, being young and, and all that. But um, the next year, we're doing a different phase of the project. So 2008 to 2009, we're doing a different phase in the project. And the floor plans were the same. But instead of doing uh, like tile bathroom floors, they were doing vinyl. Instead of doing the quartz or granite countertops, they were doing p mm-hmm. you know? So um, we do the p the vinyls, the tile, hardwoods, carpet, everything. So um, I recognize the floor plans were the same. The materials were less materials, and the price was 150000 less. And I said, there's no way this is $150,000 of material less than the exact same house. And so it just kind of didn't make sense to me. You know, I was like, this is really strange because a year later, the same house, 150 grand less, you know. But what, I mean, what was it like? Like you, you were able to get a company going, right? And you, you built Mm -hmm. up this, you had to have built up a a, a reputation. And so I'm I'm assuming Mm -hmm. part of that probably came from the guy you were working with and and you, you trained under, right? And then you went out on your own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then you you got your company and you had to establish something and then you're you're getting wiser to business as you grow this business and you mm-hmm. you you see these signs but I gotta think that one of the only reasons you were able to last through this this downturn that existed was because you had built up a name and a reputation for quality would be my mm-hmm. assumption right and yeah. that you do things right you stand behind what you do so like walk me through a little bit of that like i get that they're like we all know that it, it sucked and i it's amazing that you started noticing signs right and i'm sure that mm-hmm. clued you in to do some things but that's the I, like let's get into the real nitty gritty of it because that's that's what i want to do right like i'm saving money mm-hmm. right now because i'm just like 
look, if I got to be able to support my family for a couple months, like I need to be able to support my family for six months if I'm not going to get work, you know, I, I, there's always work to be found. It's, is it the work you want to do for the price you want to do? Right. Like if Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a, I'm a, I'll be a prima donna. I don't care. And and I want to work for high rates with the people I want to work with. But if it comes down to it and I got to run off to a box store to feed my family, I'll feed my family. But I don't, I don't think that's part of your story. So let like, what, what are we looking at? What are we trying to do? How are we building that name? How are we making sure we find work through the, the storm? Yeah. So when we were going through the, the, the battle, um, of survival, the main thing I did was I just showed up every single day, regardless of how I felt, regardless of, um, circumstances, uh, I would go to the places that we would work for, you know, where I would call them and talk to them repeatedly over and over regardless and, and just try to get anything you could possibly get. It was mainly, it wasn't like a, a strategy, more of a survival, mm-hmm. you know, it, at this point it was just like, let's just stay alive. And my strategy was, if we make it through this, then we'll be really good coming out the other side. Cause I, so many people were dropping off, um, you know, half the shop, the guys that worked there were working there for I don't know, about 20 years, they all retired. So okay. I, I saw the writing on the wall coming out the backside. It was like, if we could survive this, then we would be able to be so much better on the other side. Um, so my that was my plan was we're going to do what we have to do. And that included working throughout the night many times just to get a job for the next day or completing whatever project we could, because that might be the only other job we would get for that week. We might do two jobs there. Also communicating with everybody that I possibly knew, um, doing things, you know, friends and family, you know, we would do things for them. Um, and we did, we built a good reputation, but throughout the recession, we never sacrificed our quality. We never took a shortcut. We never tried to um, save money on a product or, or anything like that. We always just mm-hmm. kept delivering the same thing we're doing today. We did in 2009, we just delivered a high quality. The difference is now we do it with more people. So I did, I stuck to that. That was my, that was always been my motto, um, you know, a good reputation and a good name and, and we'll just keep plugging away. And that's what we did during that time. But it was a, definitely a struggle. Um, mm-hmm. Hard headedness, probably mainly, you know, sticking <laughs> to it. <laughs> okay. Don't know when to quit, you know, I mean, I sleepless nights. Yeah, I, I bet. I mean, I've heard, so there's, I forget what book it's in, I, but I've, I've heard, you know, recession comes along. Most companies will dial everything back. They'll quit spending. Mm-hmm. And I, I've heard that, you know, if you just like that's the time to spend money because everyone's dialing back. Mm-hmm. So you can start dominating the market if you have that war chest saved up. That's your time to grow is if you can gain the market share during the recession when the boom years come. You're so much further ahead of everybody because you've been building this whole time. So is that what you feel you were doing? Did you, do you think like you were, did you add on any employees during this like downturn and you were, you were trying to grow even though it was like super skinny profits and probably like not a lot of work. Did you feel like you were able to grow a little bit? So I, I think a lot of people don't really realize what the situation was in 2009, 10, um, even up until 12, maybe it kind of started coming out better then, but, um, what did you, what were you doing in 2009? So I had, I graduated from my for-profit uh, college for video production, September, 2009. My son was born five days before I graduated, man. I almost nailed the trifecta, right? I got married. I bought the house. <laughs> my son was born or, or the, you know, and then, and then I graduated college. I was like, darn it, dude, you couldn't have come like a, I, come on. <laughs> but uh, yeah. so I got I was I got into video production, which people kind of always need, not necessarily then. But I started getting into reality television, which that's the perfect time because people mm-hmm. are not working. No one has jobs, but they're staring at a television screen. And so yeah. television content was it, it. That was, you know, originally I wanted to go into movies, but reality television was so prevalent that it was a no brainer of like, Hey, this is going to be an easy way to stay busy and make money. Yeah. So, um, 2009, thinking back, um, 
I had a conversation with the employees and we had, we had a couple guys and okay. it was to the point, it was to the point where I didn't have a work chest saved up. Um, I had little experience at, at uh, having a business or running everything. And we mm -hmm. never even got to even talk about profits and margins and taking care of this and having all these accountants and, and bookkeepers and, <laughs> you know, all these other things you get into down the road. Yeah. Cause we were so new. We just got hammered within a year and a half. We were hammered. Yeah. Uh, but we, I, I realized that here's what I can do. I can, I have, I'll have enough work for a couple guys, but these other guys, what do we want to do as a group? Cause I always, people always work with me, they're employees, but we all work together. So Great at attitude. the same time I had a conversation, I said, here's what we can do. We can all work for a little less or one of us has to go. And we just looked around and we made the group decision to stick together and mm -hmm. we stuck it out. We all worked for a little bit less um, pay, but at the end of the day, we're able to make it. There was months where, you know, this is really sad, man. I don't, when I say, I don't think people realize how bad it was, but you're talking like $300 profit in a month. That's what you had to operate on. Mm -hmm. because they were just everybody was just cut throat um and it, it's a very rare thing like we never had this happen it was since the great depression they were almost calling it a depression it wasn't yeah, like just a yeah. recession yeah, yeah you know so it was beyond imagination um but when you're in the middle of a fight you know you don't realize how bad you're getting hit <laughs> you're just like trying to stay on your feet yeah well and the scary thing is is that everyone immediately goes to lowering the rates because mm -hmm. it, it, it's always it's always money based it's money based well sell on value right like that's what we're preaching now and that's easy because it's this boom economy still even though mm -hmm. there's really weird writing on the wall but it's it, it, the first thing to go is always the rates because i just got to get paid i just got to get paid and that's you know all i ever see in these groups especially from the car a lot of the carpet installers is these were the rates in 1970. These were the rates in 1990. Like, why are we working for this stuff? Because mm -hmm. every time something happens to the economy, any gains you made, y you wipe them out. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like that. That's the biggest lesson that I can see is like we all have to stand firm on like this is where it is, especially in the with the current economy. Like, if if the rate is 5.8% inflation for the year so far, why aren't we increasing our rates 10%? You know, mm -hmm. you can't, you can't go 5.8. Like that's, that's the bare minimum to stay ahead. We got to go up 10%. Like why? Yeah, you definitely, we, it's, it's crazy. You definitely would have to have some sort of increase in order to not be losing money. And, and I, I had thought of this, you know, in the last week or two, thinking of the, the inflation rate, um, if you were working for an employer and, and we had, we had given 3% raises annually for a long time as a standard practice that, mm -hmm. you know, if you're at work doing your job, progressing, you're going to make 3%. That's a minimum. Um, as you make more money, 3% is quite a bit more money. It adds up over and over. So, Correct. um, we would do reviews and then, you know, we obviously have a regular jumps, uh, if you become more qualified, Mm -hmm. um, we have we have ways people can make more money instantly by getting qualifications, and then they would get their three percent on top of that. Okay. But considering that three percent raise, which is a, a basically a standard raise for a federal government, yeah. If you said three percent raise and five point eight percent inflation means you made almost three percent less money home, you know, you're making less money because even with your raise, you're losing two and a half, you know, two point eight percent of your income from last year. Correct. So if you didn't get a raise. You know, you're making 5.8% less. And I'm sitting here contemplating these things now. I'm looking, I'm going, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't have a crystal ball. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always been an optimist. Um, so I have this feeling like, you know, we're going to, something's going to happen eventually at some point in time. This is kind of a weird combination of all these things happening now. And nobody really, you know, I, I'm not going to be able to sit here and solve what's going on because there's people way smarter than me that are trying to solve what's going on. Correct. But if I look at it and I'm like, okay, well, how much, what can I do now to make myself be in a better position based on my past experiences? Uh, you know, you've hit the nail on the head with, you know, have some sort of a nest egg, you know, mm -hmm. three to six months, 10 years, if you can do it, you know, if you had a whole bunch of time as and much as possible. Money, <laughs> yeah. Always. No, I agree. I, I think that's, that's the first takeaway is a lot of people don't realize like, uh, look, I, 
Floor Academy, I have the book of the month, right? We read a lot of books. People, I, I've put some Dave Ramsey stuff out there. There's a lot of people that aren't a big fan of it. I get that. There's a lot of people that aren't a big mm -hmm. fan of Robert Kiyosaki and Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Like Everyone's got a take on their personal financial system, but you cannot argue being prepared for a rainy day. I, I'm not saying you have to set everything aside into savings so that you can't go and have any toys. Look, I the, this the camera, the lights, the the all of this stuff, the the microphone. These are all toys to me. This is this is awesome playtime. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, do I have sponsors? Do I make a little bit of money doing this? Yes, but honestly, these are all my toys, right? I don't have a boat. I don't have sports cars. I don't have a four wheeler or anything. These are my toys. This is what I like doing. Mm -hmm. But I have that nest egg building up because I'm making good money. And at some point, there's going to be a rainy day. And I want to make sure my family and I and my business all make it through that. I think, like I said before, right, if you can make it through the downturn, e even you said, right, if I can make it through this, I'm going to be stronger on the other side. And so how... You made it through. You guys took pay cuts. You kept everybody on board. And so what did that do for you on the other side of it? You know, come, oh, let's see. If it was late 2008, so 2009, 10, probably about 2011, you started seeing a change of, like, things picking back up and, and starting to have some movement. Yeah, it, it was it was uh, about two and a half years, and uh, then it started picking up. Um, they did a lot of things. You're good. You there? Yeah. 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 Okay. Hold on. I, I lost the video. Hold on. Okay. There I am. <laughs> the government did a lot of things back then, but it wasn't, it wasn't like they're doing now. Mm -hmm. So they didn't give people money directly. You know, back then it was like, let's stabilize the issue by giving the banks money because they're the ones that have these bad loans. Now they're like stabilizing the issue on, the individual side they're like okay well these people aren't in work aren't working they need to make these payments or else we're into a home loan default situation like 2009 10 11. yeah you know so they're trying to avoid that situation on top of you know people being home um it, it kind of makes sense but um you know figuring that part out leave it to the, the people wiser than me you know but yeah we just try to stick it out as long as we can you know the 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 strategy I have going forward is just to try to maintain my, my clientele. I have, um, keep the high quality, you know, mm -hmm. we're keeping our guys going. There's no sign of the industry slowing down. Um, everything's right. still going gangbusters. Yeah. I, and I'm not sure what, what it would take at this point, looking at how strong the economy has been and, and what we're, what we're looking at, even with the shutdown, how things have just been going. I can't believe it's all stimulus money, you know, um, friend of mine's in finance mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people have a lot of money in their home, equity in their homes. Uh, they're getting low interest rate loans for a lot, large sums of money. Uh, you move out of your house, you move into another house for more money or you stay where you're at and you upgrade the whole thing. Yeah. So it seems like that's what we're seeing is you're not getting an upgrade by moving into a new place. You just upgrade your place with money that you already have in equity. So I don't know what it would what it would look like in the future as far as um, an economic downturn. You know, I've never been through um, an inflation like this. You know, when people say the word inflation. It kind of it kind of gives you like a, a tingle up your spine, you know. Yeah. But then we, we look at the percentages and we go, well, we, we should raise our rates, you know, um, to adjust for that inflation. And we're just continuing the inflation. You know, it's not it's covering the difference, but it continues the inflation. Um, so I, I, we're in kind of a unique space. We're not in, we're not in products and materials. We don't make, I don't make mortar. I don't make tile, you know? So, yeah. I mean, I don't know how much more I can add to that as far as like the labor rates. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to be part of the problem. I mean, I get it, but if it's going to cost me more to live, to buy my food, buy my gas, pay my bills, you know, I can only assume that the next time I renew my insurance, that's going up. It just it's it's costing me more to live, and so mm -hmm. I've got to, you know, I feel like I've got to put a premium on that. I just got mm -hmm. a letter today that one of my distributors, you know, I think um, 
a couple of Sika adhesives are going up 10% and a different line is going up 20% because raw material mm-hmm. costs are, you know, we can't get them and they're through the roof and the shipping costs and this. And, okay. Well, that's on top of, you know, 10 or 20% they added earlier this year. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, there's just, there's been so many price increases and it, it's at what point does it just become unaffordable? It, it's actually, it's, I find it really interesting. So my, I, I need to get out of this little itty bitty house that I'm in. I've got a whopping 1100 square feet here. No garage, no mm-hmm. yard, no nothing. Um, so I found this, this house that was for sale, you know, it's like a 30, what was this one? This one was like 3000 square feet, little guest house above the, um, the garage that was, you know, probably like four or 500 little yard, but could store a trailer, had a pool. They bought it for 375 in February of this year. It went back on the market early October, 775. Get out of here. No, dude, I'm not lying. <laughs> this is this is what I'm talking about. And I guarantee That's you that crazy. there is not two hundred thousand dollars worth of upgrades in that home. There's not. No, I mean that's I, that's kind of the gamble. The the no, they'll get it. They will yeah, they, they'll get it, but they'll it's... they'll get it. And and knowing but my concern is you know, it has new cabinets, it has new showers, it has new flooring. Look, like, mm-hmm. I know contractors around here and I know people that flip houses and I know the contractors they use. Mm-hmm. That shower is going to probably fail within a year. The other shower will probably fail within a couple years. You know, the the floor is probably going to pop up and have grout issues. Like, mm-hmm. it, how do you justify a fifty percent increase in eight months? I don't. I don't, honestly, I, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get it's it either. Insane. You know, I'm I'm kind of in this weird spot. You know, our our house. We don't have a very. I mean, we have a a, a mortgage on our house. Mm-hmm. But our neighbor across the street just listed their house, and I asked him. I was like, "Well, do you think you're going to get that price?" I mean, it was like, oh, like almost eight ninety. You know, you're like uh, across the street. You're you're going. Maybe I should sell my house. You know, and mm-hmm. uh, the guy uh, he goes, "Well, we're just testing the market. If someone gives us the price, then we'll sell the house." But he's like, "If not, we'll just stay." He's like, "But we're just listed it." They never even put a sign in the front yard. They just listed it on the MLS. Yep. Um, and it sold in a week. You know, and you're like. How the heck are yeah, people in, in, in honesty, they're selling their house somewhere else. You know, Arizona is a place where, you know, people would want to retire uh, or something and everyone's been know, there. Yeah. And so you, you take equity from a place that has high values and from the last 20 years and next thing you know, you have equity and they're just like, it doesn't make a difference what it is. We want the 3000 foot house and that's been lightly remodeled and uh, we'll deal with the consequences later. So they just spend the cash, but, I think that's a bad investment. I you know, yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. The, it's the scary. people are going to lose lose value in their life, um, and and um, basically whatever. I lost you a little bit there at the end, but um, it's it, it, it's a scary thing, right? If like annual home mm-hmm. like appreciation is three to five percent, Arizona has seen a twenty percent increase like year over year. Or, and, and it's like sometimes it's like 20 percent a month it, it's been well, it's it, supply and demand it's been it, it's just it's gangbusters and absolutely ridiculous out here and that's that's why i'm like what's going on like how do i make it through when people decide that they want to stop upgrading because that's a lot of it right is all these people are like oh i have so much equity in my home i'll just refinance and get a new loan and i'll i'll put all these upgrades into it mm-hmm. so i mean yeah it's great for us right now but at some point that that's got to stop and then who's your client right like who are you finding mm-hmm. when when this easy money doesn't exist anymore because interest rates are are so low and so mm-hmm. how do we i i got to assume that you've built up some kind of a war chest in the in the past years you've learned how to run a business more efficiently from where you were at in in 2008 2009 mm-hmm. and so you know what are you looking at? What are you doing? What are you trying to to make happen so that you and and the people that work for you are, are protected? You know, you offered them all. You said, look, one of us has got to go or we all take pay cuts. You, you've mm-hmm. built a culture in a community. Mm-hmm. You're not just hiring people to get a job done. 
So how yeah, are you yeah, how are you looking not. out for those people now? Uh, well, for me, um, you know, I, I take care of myself, you know, through my I, I've situated myself to where I'm in a position um, where my business can survive. Uh, I, you know, I built the war chest up, so to say, um, we, we practice good things, you know, save money, lower expenses, try to don't exceed your, your means for a living. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all the standard Dave Ramsey stuff, you know, pay off the credit cards, uh, you know, all that stuff. So mm-hmm. we went through Dave Ramsey, we went through total money makeover, okay. you know, we were saving our, saving everything, you know, um, I was recycling clamp down metals in 2010, you know, so that's how tight it was. But um, now I've built a reputation. I'm, I'm 10 years removed from the lowest point mm-hmm. um, in 10 years. You can, you can totally revamp your life, you know? So at this point, our reputation is very good. Um, we have uh, a lot of customers we've had since 2010, you know, the, the contractors we work for now, uh, they've survived the recession as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're, they're really built up and they're resilient. Uh, a lot of the other people, they're, they're like high net worth individuals or contractors. They, they deal with people that have a lot of expendable money that they'll be remodeling continually. Um, some larger companies, but at this point for my guys, uh, whatever happens next, you know, those decisions are made day to day, but we're in a position where, uh, everybody still has a lot of opportunity. There's no real, I don't want to say there's no real risk, you know, but the yeah. R words kind of, you know, but there's always the potential um, that something terrible could happen, but we're in a good position because of what we've done over the last 10 years, you know, time serves you well when you do the right thing. So we're going to, um, you know, just, I've always looked out for the guys. I don't assume I can go in a circle because it's really hard to narrow this down to like, mm-hmm. what's your strategy. Yeah. But um, you, I built a culture with employees that were a team. They work with me on a daily basis. Um, there's no lowest man on the totem pole. Uh, we all work together. Uh, mm-hmm. if there's, you know, something that needs done. doesn't matter what it is. If you feel like you're too good for that job, then you're not right for this, you know, for this company. That's, okay. that's how I operate here. So, um, if something bad happens, we'll address that. But for now we're in a good position. Uh, we've saved money. We paid off vehicles. We carry low, low debts. Um, all the standard practices that you should do. I know that uh, it's, sometimes it's hard having a business and having everything squared away, you know, as far as debts go and all that. Uh, make sure the payrolls are taken care of. And then we take care of our people. And I don't know, ultimately, you know, I've never been through an inflation bubble or, yeah. or long term deal, you know. So, um, but as far as recession goes, you know, you have to be resilient, you know, hunt down the work. Um, I don't think pricing is a good way to, to, to get rid of that because um, I have a brief story about pricing from the last recession where um, I was able to combat that with a contractor and, and, re, and win back my position in, in their installation team um, at the original pricing before the recession, during the recession. So um, there's that side as well. Well, I but, think that, you know, that's we'll, exactly it. Like I was talking about before, right? Like I don't think lowering the rates is ever the way to go. That's why we're always, oh, the, why haven't the rates changed? Why haven't the rates changed? I can't make any money. Mm-hmm. There's these guys lowballing me. Like, mm-hmm. so what? What is that story? Like, you lost a contract with a contractor because somebody else came in and underbid you. I'm assuming, and yeah, then they absolutely. came back and and you said, these are the rates. This is how much I need. This is what I provide. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, so l- let's hear that. So that story. Okay. Um, I worked for his company for about three years uh, at, up to this point when uh, all of a sudden they quit giving me work. You know, we were working for a shop. They stopped um, giving us work and I didn't hear a phone call for probably two months from, them. you know, I'd mm-hmm. call them and leave messages and they wouldn't get back to me. And, and one day I got a call and he's like, Hey Dave, I got a job for you. And I was like, well, what, what's been going on? Because, um, you know, you haven't, I haven't done a job for you guys in months, but I never want to give them the aspect that I, I absolutely need their work because yeah. then I'm, then I'm stuck at their beck and call and what they say is the wage, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, so we just stayed busy with other things. And then he goes, well, 
this guy came in here looking for work. He said he would do it for, I think it was 50 cents less a square foot than you're doing for the hardwood. And back then we're using three quarter inch solid uh, material, Mm -hmm. (laughs) not engineer staple down. Yeah. So um, I said, okay. So he gives me a job and I come back at the end of the job. I bring back, uh, it's like 120 square feet of material from a job. And he, he looks at me and goes, I knew he was taking the wood. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he goes, this guy, this guy hasn't brought back a box of wood in two months. And I said, well, how much is this stuff? He goes, it's like five and a quarter a square foot. So I did the math and I said, hey, this, this is five and a quarter a square foot. I divided over how much feet. And I said, did you know you could be paying me an extra 50 cents a foot to install this stuff? And you'd still be saving a quarter. And so every time we worked for in the past, we always brought back wood. So this was a way of him testing the waters, saying like, well, am I just that tight of material? What's going on? But this other installer, he thought the way to do it was, uh, it's a recession. I'm just going to steal this product from this shop and I'm going to take it in. I'm going to sell it on Craigslist or wherever. Mm-hmm. You know, this mm-hmm. time, I don't even know if there was Craigslist because the iPhone was like a year old. But anyhow, they had, yeah, yeah. He, was, he was selling it somewhere, Yellow Pages or something. But um, so at that point, I said, you know, we need to have a conversation. And I talked to him and um, said, here's the deal. This is what we did. This is what it cost. This is what we brought back to you in products that's returnable. And so here's what we need. I want every single job you do for this, like this, and we'll bring back the material every single time like we always have. When we have that frank conversation and people know exactly where you stand, you know, in that integrity got us back in that position until that company sold to another company. Okay. And then we were automatically in with that other company and we worked for, for them for years until, um, you know, we were just too busy to, to do anything else based on our own referrals and advertising and all that stuff. But I think it's important to have conversations and build relationships with people before the recession happens, before yeah. the yeah, weird yeah. economic bubble. Um, a lot of the guys that I work with, um, one of them, he's getting ready to retire um, I call them just to talk because I enjoy them as people, mm-hmm. not because it's, they don't, it's not because they're giving me things. It's because I value relationships. I build those things up. And then ultimately at the end of the day, they'll give me some work, but that's not the objective in the conversation, you know? Yeah. No, I think you have to be open and, and honest with people. And the fact that you had built a relationship and this company knew you had integrity and that you they knew what you brought to the table. They tested the waters elsewhere. They got burned and you were able to go in and negotiate a deal. But had you not built that relationship in the first place, it wouldn't happen. Now, uh, granted, you can't bite the hand that feeds you. And I've learned that lesson myself a couple of times the hard way. Um, and that's what that guy was doing. Right. You can't steal product. Mm-hmm that's not yours and then sell it or sell it to clients and install it and try and make that extra gravy because you got free product. Like mm-hmm. man, karma will come and get you like that. That'll happen and you'll be dealt with. Um, but I think that relationship aspect, it's, it's so important. And that's what, that's what boom times are for is it's for building the relationships. It's for showing people what you're going to bring to the table. Cause when, when things get tough, it, it's not always the dollars on the table. It's, it's not, mm-hmm. it, it's what did you bring to the table previously and how can we sit down and have a conversation as a couple of business owners and negotiate this out to make this fair for everybody. Look, this mm-hmm. is what I'm bringing to like, just like you, you did, right? I'm bringing back material. It netted you X amount of dollars back in your pocket. Give me a little bit. You keep a little bit. Everyone's happy. And my rates better than what I was getting before. It's, yeah, exactly. It's genius. Yeah, and the quality was never a question. Mm-hmm. And, you know, looking at it in this perspective, I think like a, a preemptive conversation is a good thing to have. You know, if you feel like there's some writing on the wall, maybe it's good to express to the people you work for, like, hey, if something goes down, you know, here's what we can do, you know, mm-hmm. and, and um, just to just to have that somewhat of a protection. But, you know, like I like I did with my guys last time, you know, had the conversation like, here's what we can do. It's because I cared about the people, not because. I cared about the money because the easy thing is to let someone go and have two guys, you know, instead of keeping everybody and yeah. making a little bit less as a community, you know, then, but we're able to all go through it together. Um, and that's what these, the, the survival of my company uh, and in my family depends on the survival of my employees, the survival of the supplier, 
yeah. uh, the survival of the the of the the customers that we work for, um, all those things. In fairness, um, you know, it it's something something has to give at some point, and it just has to be realistic. You know, it's it's a boom time now. You know, um, how long is it going to go on? I hope it continues. And oh I'm yeah, optimistic. for sure. The other day I had a, I had a great feeling. I was like, you know, I don't, I think we're going to be okay. I don't think this is going to be anything like 2009 because it's been such a subtle slide, but if it accelerates, then I have to worry, you know, Mm -hmm. the subtle slide um, I'm looking at, I'm like, okay, well, last time it was like, you're, you're going, you're walking. It's like, you're walking blindfolded and all of a sudden you fall off a cliff. This is a nice, this seems like a gentle downhill you know, and then, okay, now we're coming out of it. We need to do something to do that. And, you know, I don't know what that's going to be. Maybe there's a cliff down the road. Hopefully not. Um, but I, I don't see it being as dramatic as 2009. Yeah, no, I don't. I hope, I, I hope I'm right. You know? I don't, I don't think it's that. I don't think the housing market will fall out. I don't think there's like a, I, I pray there's not a huge stock market crash, right? Like it, there's mm-hmm. there's plenty of other things that can that can happen, right? You can hit hyperinflation mm-hmm. and and you, all kinds of weird things can happen. But it's mm-hmm. more what do we need to do to prepare for any kind of bad situation? But what you're talking about are these basic principles that are yeah, honestly, like look this this shows everyone's like, oh my gosh, the show, the topics, they're so great. We hit on the same things all the time. (laughs) Integrity, Mm -hmm. communication, uh, partnerships, like it's it's all these basic business principles and we hit on them over and over again. We just tell it in a different package. And I'm not trying to downplay the show. I'm not trying to downplay what it does. I'm not trying to downplay what people bring to the table and the stories they tell. But it is it's 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 the same things over and over again even the business books that you know i read and listen to and and i put out there in the group on it's a lot of times it's the same thing repackaged over and over and it's somebody else's take on it or they take you know this guy took these two books and put them together and he has his own take on that like at at some point it clicks for you right like you're like oh Mm -hmm. now i get it that's the way i needed to hear it and that's the important part and i think that's what people need to take away is right now is the time to be building up whatever you need to build and to get ahead um Mm -hmm. you know you've got these employees you've built this culture and, and you're trying to take care of them and and like you said your survival is based on them surviving your suppliers surviving the the clients that you have whether it's a builder or a retailer or even individual clients is based on them surviving because you're gonna get a phone call again from them saying hey we moved or hey we want to upgrade this bathroom now and and so how do you do that right how do you remain relevant how do you stay in touch and and build those relationships like honestly right you're not like you said you're not calling to be worried about a dollar you're calling because you want to have that honest conversation. And so how do you, how do you go about that, David? Like, what is it for you that makes you say, I just want to call Susie homemaker today because that's what needs to happen. Yeah. You know, you sometimes you in sales, right? They have what's called sales calls. You make your sales calls and you'll talk to people and you're trying to jump up a business. You're trying to, find somebody that, that needs something that you're providing. Um, and what I've done is, is I don't really do that. I I've done it infinitely, um, you know, to, to get where I am today, I'll always call places and I don't have a problem with it. Uh, just like I called you after we'd met, mm-hmm. I called you, we just talk about random stuff. You yep. know, it's like, we just talk like old friends. It's not, it's not some weird thing. It, um, but when you get into the point um, where you have a customer base or people that you work with, when I talk to them, I pay attention, you know, and uh, they might say something about like, I have a customer um, who was taking care of her mom for years, you know, and we did like three remodels for her and her mom passed away. And uh, I call her every now and then just to see how things are going. How's everything going around the house? Is there anything that you need? Uh, Cause I live close. It's not, mm-hmm. it's not like I need anything from her to do those things. I maintain the relationships and just call an interesting, just talk to people, I have customers that I worked for 
uh, about 11 years ago, we, we're going to the gun range um, on Wednesday in the afternoon just to have some fun, just to shoot and talk. You know, I asked about their family, their their spouse. They take me up in the airplane. You know, it's like it's fun little things. And I'm like, I don't know if I should do this. You know, we're we're in like a little. He's got like a glider with a propeller on the back of it. You know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's basically a hang glider with a propeller on the back, and you're yeah. sitting above. One guy sitting below, and he's like, "Hey, Dave, don't worry about man. If we go down, I'm the first one in." And I'm like, that gives me no comfort. You know. <laughs> But you build these relationships and and you just be authentic with people. Um, as a small business person, I think that's more probably one of the most important things you can do is be authentic, build relationships, because those people that you do those things with, that you're actually just enjoying life with, they think about you if somebody in their, their circle goes, you know, I was thinking about remodeling this bathroom. And they're going to think about the guy who was, you know, up there with them uh, in a little experimental glider craft. Um, or that they go to the range with every Wednesday yeah, uh, or whatever the relationship is. Um, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going, I'm going out to Idaho tomorrow, um, hunting for two days with my attorney, um, uh, because I had to go through some stuff here, uh, some legal things I went through, um, and, uh, we became good friends, you know, yeah. we, I, I took him hunting. He killed a nice buck. He moves to Idaho. I'm friends with his wife. Uh, his parents are here. They refer business. Um, so it just, I've just been in the relationship creating business, you know, yeah. uh, everything we do can end badly and totally ruin a relationship and your company's reputation. So continually doing a, a professional job, being courteous, all those things go into that relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and the people that you care, the people that you live life with, you have to give the utmost respect because they're the ones that are going to carry you through hard times. No, I totally agree. All right, I got to interrupt. I'm a little late on this. I apologize. I've been really enjoying the conversation. Mm -hmm. What's the hardest part of starting and growing a flooring business? Getting clients. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, you need a marketing partner like Traffic Digital. Traffic is a full-service marketing agency that works with flooring companies all across the country. They'll help you get a continuous stream of clients using the most modern online marketing techniques. So visit www.trafficdigital.com today to sign up for a free marketing analysis. And don't forget, traffic is with a K. Um, no, I think what you bring up about these building relationships, like that's the amazing part of small business, right? Like, um, I've been talking with Trask Bergerson a lot and his company's not huge, right? It's, it's not a couple hundred people yet, but there's, there's a good amount of people and there's a couple of partners involved for him to make a decision with the partners and be able to decide this is the direction we need to go. It's a struggle for someone like you and I, it's, Hey, this is what we need to do. Let's go. Like we can, we can pivot a little bit quicker. And even as you get into bigger corporate structure structures, how friendly is Apple? What kind of relationships are they building personally with their clients? Right? Like you used to hear stories about Steve jobs, replying personally to emails and, you know, taking care of like some, some kind of customer complaint or something like that. But it, it, that's not the story you hear all the time. It's not the people in the Apple store reaching out and, and doing things. And this isn't to knock them. That's just large corporate business. You walk into to Walmart and you, you go to find someone to help you. And the 16 year old kid turns and walks away. How do I know? Cause I worked at target and I was 16 and or now I was like 20, but whatever uh, people would come and try and find me stock in the shelf. And I'd be like, I don't want to deal with this. And I would turn and walk away. Like, I don't want, that's not what I'm here for. I just want to collect yeah. my check. And so I, I think that's the huge difference is going and making those connections. And I, I I've seen people be like, Oh, you can't be friends with clients. You can't do that. You can't go mm -hmm. over to dinner after you finish their shower or their floor. You're going mm -hmm. hunting with people. You're getting in gliders with them. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> Putting your life glider. on the line. Yeah. Like, yeah. But that's that relationship. That's how you move a business forward it, is it's all. It, it, it Look, there's value propositions. There's the, the fact that there's pricing involved. And yes, price is a factor. It's just one of the last. But at the end of the day, without a solid relationship, people want to do business 
with people they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And and that's what you're out there doing. I think that's that's how you're going to make it. Do people know, like, and trust you? And you apparently, during a not-so-good time, made people know, like, and trust you. It's now carried over, and you keep using that system over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... it's, um... I never thought of it as a system. It's it's mainly, you know, like just who I am, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know Trask a little bit and, um, you know, I like Trask because we met and it was like, you were there when the first time I met Trask and it was like, just like friends, you yeah. know, friends and everybody's oh, just having going. a good time. There's no, there's a relationship there. And I've spoke with him several times since then, bounced business questions off of him, uh, sought advice, mm-hmm. you know, uh, cause he has experience different than mine, you yeah, know, exactly. but the, the cool thing is I hope, um, you know, we're in this, we're, he's in, um, uh, Astoria, Astoria. I was going to say Portland, but, um, he's just across the Ilwaco bridge in Astoria there. Um, you know, I'm up here in, in Pierce County, but if I know anybody looking for work or someone looking for a, a job to be done down that way, even in like Longview, I'll give him trash. I'll say, hey, call Burgess and Tile. Mm-hmm. Um, likewise, he knows I'm up here. So someday he may flip me some work up here. Maybe one of his clients is moving up here. Yeah. Um, you know, that type of deal. And the relationships you build with other contractors, too. Um, it's not really a competition. Uh, we're, you know, we're all professionals. Uh, exactly. We should be. So um, if I know someone that's moving to Arizona, which is uh, quite a few people, and they're like, hey, <laughs> I'm going down to Phoenix. I'm like, okay, well, you need to talk to Kyle. You know, they'll they'll call me and they'll ask, Dave, because they, they know I've been in this business a while. They'll say, mm-hmm. do you know anybody down in Arizona who can take care of this for me? And I'll say, oh, yeah. You know, and, and those referrals carry over. And then you yeah. get the benefit of the relationship I built with those people. But I expect you to uphold the other side Correct. of that where you treat them as I would treat them, you know. And, and that's just that's reciprocation, I guess, in, in a nutshell. No, I, that's exactly it. You know, I. Um, the project I'm working on this week. Um, so where are we at? We're in we're late October and then this will come out down the road. But I have a client that I did work for and he works for a company that does concrete. And I so I, you know told my client that on this project that I'm currently on, like, oh, you need to get your sunken living room taken care of. You want to get that filled? Cool. Call this guy. Well, they called him and he was like, no, 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 I can't do it. He referred it out to somebody else. It did. It was like the worst experience these people had because mm. they, the, the concrete got poured horribly. Um, there was a huge hump that was three quarters inch high in the middle of it that had to come out and I still have to pour some self-leveling underlayment to make the rest of the house. Okay. But like it, it created more work, but then they also like, they made a mess down the walkway and in the driveway and in the rocks, they had to come back and like acid wash it. And like, it was just like start to finish. It was a horrible experience. And I'm sitting here hearing this story and I'm like, I'm the one who told you who to call. And you did that. And now look at like Mm -hmm. where this is all ending. And so I, they they trusted me. I made a recommendation and then I get burned by my recommendation, not just saying, no, no, I can't handle it, but by giving, so I'm, I'm with you. Like you have to honor these commitments. You've spent so much time investing into these clients of yours that they, like I said, they know, like, and trust you. And what you say, that's you, you. Your word is your bond and it's as good as gold. And and then I went and like these people are burned because of it. It it sucks. It's not a Mm -hmm. good situation to be in because then what do they do? Are they going to ever call me and ask me for a recommendation again? Probably not. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's a risky run sometimes. And, you know, you should hopefully uh, the guy did a good job of saying, hey, I'm too busy or whatever. And the other guy can, you know, maybe they got the other people out of the phone book or you know, whatever he might've given him a referral, just some competition to his, but, um, you know, hopefully it doesn't come back to bite you. Yeah. It's just, I mean, but that's the perfect example. Like I, I agree with what you're saying, right? You want to be the guy that everybody comes to. It doesn't matter that you're the tile guy or you're the floor guy. I want to be the guy that everyone says, Oh, I know Kyle has the answer. Oh, I know David has the answer. It doesn't matter if it's the banker, the bakery person, the insurance sale. I don't care what it is, man. Like I want to know you. I mm-hmm. want to, I want to meet you. I want to know what you do 
because when I hear somebody that has a problem, I want to be the one that can solve it. And then if you exactly, have to yeah. call me every time, now I'm top of mind with you all the time. It's, oh, Kyle, the floor guy knows that. And if they're always thinking mm-hmm. about Kyle, the floor guy, when they hear the word floor, it's, I got the guy. I got him. <laughs> yeah, I got this guy knows everybody, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's I feel like I'm in a position similar to that because um, I've been in the trades here and work with the same people. I, I know trim carpenters, plumbers, electricians that I work with, and they all refer me work too. So, um, and we, we flip it back and forth, but we're all in that mm-hmm. same page. Um, we all deliver the, we all deliver for our clients every single time, you know, and I know they will, and they know I will. And so that's the relationship we have. And then we get together and we throw a barbecue or we go yeah. fishing. <laughs> it's like, there you go. Yeah. How well, are the kids? I, come over I, to the house. Yep. And I, I think it's, um, it, it's important, like. I've had people be like, oh, well, I need a, I need a, I need a kickback. Mm-hmm. No, I never I'm, get any I'm money not, back. No, I'm not playing that game. I'm not going to buy a referral from you. Like, mm-hmm. If you, if you really like me and you really want me to succeed, you can send them my way. And then when I hear somebody that can needs what you need, I will send them your way. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't like the whole like kickback, you know, give me a, give me a finder's fee or, it, it, it's not it, you're just going to the highest bidder what do they provide what do they really provide like it, it, are you just after the money or do you really want to refer me because you think i do a good job and and that's exactly. that's always been my concern with that is like what's your what's your real motive here mm-hmm. yeah that the money money is an issue um if people want kickbacks you know i I've, I've never had the experience with uh any of my any of my friends, you know, that also are tradespeople, mm-hmm. um, where they're like, "Hey, man, I gave you a fence job, or, or I gave you a deck. You owe me three hundred bucks, or whatever." Yeah. Uh, there's never been a conversation like that because honestly, I don't need the money that bad. It's, I'm not sitting here hoping for three hundred dollars. Um, you know, I, I I like these guys. You know, that's like genuine mm-hmm. part of my life. Correct. But I also want them to be successful, and they always call. They're like, "Hey, uh, we're doing this remodel over here. We're getting ready to do the bathroom. Do you want to do the tile work?" Um, I just need to know how much, you know, and that's it. There's never like, or they just flip me the whole customer. You know, they're like, Hey, this people wanted to, we thought they wanted to do a, a kitchen remodel. Apparently they just want to do the countertops and the backsplash. So we'll just go ahead and take care of them. And then yeah. they'll move on to the a customer that that's in their ballpark, you know, something that they take care of on a regular basis and, and vice versa. I have a, a company we do a ton of work for in, in out of Tacoma. Uh, they work all over the region but customers will ask me, hey, can you do this, uh, remodel this or take care of this project? And I constantly am giving out referrals to them saying, you know who you need to call? These people, because what's going to happen is, is you know, you're, they're like the most professional company you ever deal with. They're cater every single thing that you're doing to you. You're going to have all these options. You de- uh, dedicated staff to come walk you through the process. Mm-hmm. They have lending set up. And, and for me, it, it'd be more, it'd be such a haphazard ordeal you know, cause I'm not in that field of financing people's projects. Yeah. These people do all that stuff, you know? Um, so that, I mean, not that I don't want to do that, but, um, these people already have it set up Correct. and I enjoy working for them. And I know I'm going to be the guy doing the tile for them anyway. I know that the, the chart prices they charge. And, uh, at that point, I mean, you're basically getting to, um, you're kind of building up all this recession proofness, I guess you'll say, you know? Yeah. No, I think that's exactly it, right? If if these people have already been through a storm and you all kind of if everyone's kind of survived one and they've done what they needed to do during the the good times, it's going to come back around. There's not going to be as much work, but you're able to build this tight knit group of people that all work together and you can you mm-hmm. can take care of each other. It's not everybody undercutting each other and well. I don't really usually do tile, but there's not a lot of work right now. So I'm going to get into it. It's no, no, David always took care of me. I'm going to hire David. I'll, I'll do the, you know, I'll do the kitchen. He can have the bath. We'll get the deck guy doing the deck. Like there's, there's enough. I, I guess it comes down to it's the, it's the scarcity versus, you know, abundancy mindset. And when you mm-hmm. just, you, you think when you know, there's an abundancy, no matter what, you you don't sweat the small stuff. Mm-hmm. And I've called people directly too, and and 
because we have a relationship, I'm like, hey, you know, we really need some work. You know, if you got anything coming on up, let me know. Like in the next two to three weeks, um, we could really use something on our schedule, mm-hmm. you know, just to make sure we get that covered. Yeah, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's it's reaching out to your connections and letting them know what's going on with your company. Hey, man, I had a cancellation out of nowhere, you know, mm-hmm. or I, the, I, I, right now, right? Like I had a I had a shipping problem. Like I need to move some things around. Do you have anything that I could fill this hole with? Right? You have those relationships in place to make something happen, and it, it allows you to better better weather any storms that are coming along because you can you're better able to pivot and move and be flexible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing, you know, what we did too, is we didn't just do um, just tile. You know, I had mentioned earlier Mm -hmm. that we did carpet, vinyl, um, hardwoods, P lamp countertops, all that stuff, cap and cove, um, even welding hard vinyl. I mean, we've done big projects with that stuff. And so, um, you know, commercial and residential multifamily, you know, 500 unit apartment complex projects, mm-hmm. all these things we've done. Um, it gives us a lot of options. And, and I think ultimately how we survived was by, by doing more than one thing. Mm-hmm. And we've done all of it extremely well for a long period of time. And uh, so that, that gave us a leg up because a lot of the people were like, well, we'll just have you do, you know, this whole project because now we don't have to find five guys. Yeah. We don't have to coordinate with five guys. Um, so we, we were able to be reliable for them and deliver um, by, I guess, strategically saying, you know, what we're going to do, we're going to learn how to do this. We're going to learn how to do this. But I had, I was already well on my way before I started um, going on my own, which is kind of a rare thing. Yeah. I think it depends on, I think it kind of depends on how you come up. Like I went and I started with a sand and finish guy that didn't go the way I wish it would have. And then I ended up working for a company that just did, laminate vinyl plank and engineered hardwood and they all kind of work the same and that's that's my skill set and there's not to say there's anything wrong with it i've definitely been able to build a a very niche company because of it and it's it's worked very well is that sustainable i guess time will tell right like I, i could i bring in a carpet guy could i bring in a tile person probably but i haven't felt the need to but i i definitely get that there's there can be success in the diversity that you're talking about too, right? I have to call, like, I can't even tuck carpet. Okay. So if I have a, like, if I have to cut carpet in a doorway, I'm calling a guy and having him come out to tuck the carpet. Could I learn? Probably. Do I want to? No, I'll just tell the, I pay the guy $50 a doorway and I charge the client. I don't care. It's easy. He's got $150 minimum because mm-hmm. I don't know that that's a different story. We won't get into that. I think that's too low. But <laughs> if he's just running, <laughs> if he's just running around tucking carpet all day, he might be able to make some really good money with a hundred and fifty dollar minimum. Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> it's far less tools and setup. But mm-hmm. you know, I can call him up. He comes out. He takes care of the doorway. It's good to go. I don't have to waste any time on it, and it's it's mm-hmm. done by the time I leave. Um, and, and it goes back to building that relationship. You take care, you try and take care of as much stuff in house as possible. I know what I'm really good at, and I just try and find all the people that can do it, which you're doing outside of the scope. But at the time, you were like, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that, right? Most so maybe my tune changes. And I, I mean, you see me around, you see me learning. Do I think I can set tile? Yes, I think I can set tile. Do I think I can set tile very well? No, I think I'll screw it up royally bad for a very long time. But I, I follow <laughs> enough along enough to know some standards and some procedures. And like, if I needed to do a tiny bathroom, it would be a pain. But I think I would set it successfully and have good coverage and it would meet standards. I just mm-hmm. it would probably take a long time and not be very profitable. So I <laughs> you have to pick and choose your battles. And I, for me, I don't think there's been the reason to do that right now. Granted, turn on a switch that says, Hey, there's no more work and you've got to be the guy that does more. Otherwise your family's going to starve. My, my tune might change and I might have to learn a new skill set. So, um, I, I think that's, that's the other part of this equation, right? Is the company is always having to adapt there's a constant growing and 
reevaluation of of what you're doing. I, I'm sure you're not the same as you were in 2005. I'm sure your company has come leaps and bounds. And if you look back, you're probably like, this is nowhere near what I originally thought it would be. And it's because of X, Y, and Z experience. Exactly. There's, there's so many things that happened between then and now. Uh, you can't even imagine the, uh, what, where your life will be in 10 years. You know, if you said, looking back, you're like, where, where would I be 10 years from now? Mm-hmm. 10 years ago, uh, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, but, um, you know, I have friends that went from, you know, no cable TV canceling, uh, their alarm service to being millionaires in 10 years, you know? Yeah. And that's the difference between then and now. And that, that's, it's a lifetime of difference. Uh, where you could totally flip it around in 10 years and that's the 10 years is a long time. But, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I understand what you're saying there. Yeah. I think a lot of times it's, um, what is it? You, you over, you overestimate what you can accomplish in a year and underestimate what you can do in 10 is, is the rule that I've heard. And I, I believe it, right? Like you (laughs) say that one more time, you overestimate what you can accomplish in one year and underestimate what you can accomplish in 10. Oh yeah. It accelerates after the first year. Well, it's, it's not just that it's that you just, it, it, I guess when you throw 10 years out there, it doesn't seem very long. And, and so you, you think you can get more done in a year because you're like, Oh, that's a lot of time. Like I can do something. Then you look at 10 years and you, you don't necessarily put that same scale on it. You don't think you can grow as much over, over 10 years as you do in like one year. I don't know. I don't know why it works out that way, but it's (laughs) people like it's, it's in these books that I read, right? All these business books. It's, we don't have a good concept of time. Correct. And and you just, you don't, Mm -hmm. you, you don't think you can get as much done in, in 10 years. And you will usually, if you set like one, five and 10 year goals, like you won't hit your one year goals, but you'll blow your 10 year goals out of the water. And, and you'll yeah. far surpass them as long as you're working towards them. So, um, you know, I, I think that's a lot of it is that you're you're growing this thing. And, and the other part of it is, what is it? You're you you're technically like a, a different person. It's like what, like seven, eight or ten years. I don't remember what the exact number is, but like you you grow and evolve on a personal level and you're not the same as you were five, ten years ago. Uh, your your yeah. values are different your your morals have slightly changed and it's not huge changes but you get this um, your compass does change here and there right like you don't always stay true north you're you kind of veer off a little bit towards west and you veer off a little bit towards east sometimes and you just you're you're different you grow and you you gain experience mm-hmm yeah, you know, I've experienced from the past is just now, like when I first started doing these bigger commercial jobs, I my heart would be pounding on day one. You know, you're like, oh, this is awesome. We're going to do so much work. We're going to make a bunch of money. Um, so, but you're, you're just like excited about it. You got your adrenaline up. You think, uh, you know, everything's going to be so easy and you get into it and you're just like defeated. You're just like, man, this is taking forever. This job is just so big and you look at it and you're like, how are we going to get to the end of this project? You know? Mm-hmm. And that was a while back. Now you get into a big job. I'm like, Oh, okay. <clears throat> you never, my heart rate doesn't change. My, mm-hmm. my aspect or outlook doesn't differ. I know the, the speed at which we need to move. Um, everything is goes pretty dang smooth. Yeah. There's no surprises. It, 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 you're right. You change and you change on experience, you know? So going through some things in life, having that life experience, um, will make you better in the future. Hopefully, you know, if you, if you take advantage and learn from what's happening, Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, I'm totally different now than I was back then. You know, I was just, you know, a new dad, newly married and newly, newly broke. You know, (laughs) just trying to survive. So wait, wait, hold on. You were new dad, newly married, newly broke. So now you're, you're old dad, old married and, (laughs) and, and and freshly broke. Yeah. My, my baby's 12. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wish I had a little more money saved up, you know, <laughs> I shouldn't have bought that. Shouldn't have bought that last toy, you know? Um, yeah. My, my baby's 12 now, you know? And um, so things are different mm-hmm. and um, 
You know, we're in a whole new house. We have uh, twice as many people working with us as we did before. Uh, we have twice as many company vehicles than we did before. Um, we're doing our, our project cost. Uh, our average project cost is like $26,000. Um, you know, so it's, it's, you know, it's not, and it seems like a lot of money. You're like, oh, it's $26,000 project. You know, it's, that is a lot of money. Uh, yeah, but it, it's it a lot of money. It but we, it, it's, I, I get it. I, I do. I, I, go ahead. It, I, don't, I don't like to discount the dollars. You know, I never discount the dollars because it's relative to your experience, right? Mm-hmm. So when I say 26000 it it it's like, it's a common number. But other people might, their average job might be 4000 yeah. So they're like imagining twenty six. So. It's not like uh, it's not something that I like to be like, oh, it's just 26 grand, you know, because some people are like, oh, my God, 26 grand. How can you how can you do that type of thing? And um, that's just the labor side. That's not material. You know, so when I look at it, like what we're looking at dollar wise, we're you know, our labor is average 26,000. When we do um, like materials, we try to make 30 percent on all products, you know, so uh, we've incorporated that we bumped up those numbers and. So, um, that stuff adds up, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so we've, we've changed things from 10 years. Uh, we've grown, we're better than we used to be. Uh, we're more proficient. We have better relationships. Uh, we're more highly qualified. I've gone out to getting certifications, um, things that I need so I can stand out. If something happens, I want to stand out and, um, you know, you don't want to stand out because you're the cheapest. Uh, if anything, you want to be overqualified for the position. That way you can, you know, people are confident in you. And if you haven't built a relationship and they're just calling you out of the blue, like a Google ad, they're like, hey, how you doing, Kyle? Go ahead and tell me about yourself and uh, how long, you know, I see that you've been in business for five years. Um, yeah. Oh, you're a CFI certified installer. Uh, you know, tell me about that process. And it just lets them have more confidence that you're able to do with their what they're wanting done and they're more easy to let go of the dollars you ask for. You know, mm-hmm. it's one of those things that, uh, you know, cause price, you know, could become apparently a, an issue with them. No, I, I, I agree. I think that, um, price price is an issue. It, it definitely is, is a factor. I'll never deny that it's a factor. I just don't think it's the number one factor when people resort to it, um, and immediately offer a discount. I think there's, there's a lot in building, value in knowledge expertise how you're gonna hold their hand and and help them through the process how you're gonna help protect their home um or their their investment in a commercial building if you're doing commercial work right like what are you bringing Mm -hmm. to the table that's different from the next guy that literally walked in threw down a tape measure and gave them a bunch of numbers like what's that experience like and so it's all the little the little things right it's the relationship. It's it's how you present that you're going to build a relationship with them. Like, I don't want to. I posted a question a while back and it was what how would your business change if you looked at yourself as a steward of your client's finances as opposed to just trying to collect a check for a project you completed? Mm-hmm. So and, and I think that's that's the thing is we if we're going to go in as a professional, I have to consider myself a steward of their finances. I need to make sure that they're spending them wisely. And so I don't want to sell them a rinky dink product that I can put a huge margin on just to make money. I want to provide them with a, a quality product that will last them for, you know, if they tell me they're going to be there five years and they want to sell. We need this looking good in five years. But if they tell me that. They want to be in the home the next 30 years while their kids grow up and they retire in it. We need to get them the product that's going to last them 30 years and still look good because they're making Mm -hmm. a huge investment. And so I have to take these things into consideration and I'm not going to get rich off of one job. I want to get rich off of a hundred jobs and and you're going to, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to do this project for you and then you're going to recommend me to a couple of the neighbors. And if I do it right, I was reading some story and the the person has the kids coming back now. They did a shower, you know, 20 years ago when these kids were, you know, 14 years old. These kids have been through college now. They're out on their own getting married, buying houses. Who are they calling? The dude that did shower for mom and dad. 
yeah, how good exactly. of a job did you do that these kids mm-hmm. remember you 20 years later or even that the parents remember who you are 20 years later yeah you yeah. know that's, that's a good reputation man that's you definitely it. you definitely did all the right steps and built that relationship and you you know that you stuck out in their memory for something mm-hmm. you know maybe it's because you took time and pet their dog and you know and threw the knows? ball or you know yeah took your shoes off when you came in the first time or ask them what they prefer and all these other things you know mm-hmm. just they're building up the the client side of the business um you know you got to do all the right things you know uh, yeah no i agree i i love like you know simple drop and lock lvp floors is is mostly what i do and you know, if there's a young kid there and he's home for the day or, or, or her, right? I'm like, hey, come here, help me, help me do this. And I'll, I'll give them the mallet and I'll let them beat a board it. And they're so proud. Dad comes home in the evening. They're like, dad, look, look, I put this one in. It's such <laughs> a, it's such a stupid experience, but yeah. it, it like, it makes them happy. It makes the parents happy. It may, on, just looking at it, like they're proud of it. I remember being out working, like wrenching on a car with my dad man, I was mm-hmm. getting in the way. I was obnoxious. I slowed down the process, but man, the way like he let me hold a tool and like, I felt like I was important and I made a difference. Yeah. <laughs> and now, exactly. that, now that I'm the dad, I'm like, okay, I can get through this. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> this is a good yeah, experience for you. I did some breaks one time back in, uh, I think I was in ninth grade. Uh, my, one of my, uh, neighbors he had a, like a 67 chevy nova okay something like that it had drum brakes on the rear so you know we got all the drums we've got all the springs back where they go and then we put the car in reverse we slam on the brakes to adjust it right so we got it all back and years later down the road uh, a friend of mine in high school he's like hey uh i gotta get a brake job on my car but i can't afford it my parents won't give me any money right so I tell him, I was like, oh, shit, I could do those. <laughs> and he, he goes home and he tells his dad, he's like, dad, I need, I need $45 for these pads, for brake pads. And he's like, what are you going to do with those? <laughs> he said, well, Dave's going to change the pads on my car. He goes, the hell he is. He goes, I'm not letting him change the pads on that car. He said, you know what happened if you drove through this thing? And he doesn't know how to do that. So he's like, fine. So we went into how we ended up getting the pads anyway. Somehow he had come up with the money some way. I did the brakes on his car. And his dad was wondering, like, what happened to the brakes on the car? And he's like, they fixed him. And ever since then, he never questioned me after that, you know, <laughs> ever since I did those breaks. So, uh, yeah. Good stuff. But it all started with that wrenching, you know, that one thing, you know, and and me and that me and that buddy of mine's dad, we have a good relationship because he knows I'm not BSing. You know, if I said mm-hmm. I'm in, I could do that, then ever since 22 years ago, um, when I did the breaks on his son's car, he trusts me. And I mean, we we're doing work for them and their family and probably seven or eight different jobs over the years, you know. There you go. And I, yeah. I think it's good. Like the kids need exposure, right? Everyone's like, oh, I don't want my kid to be in the trades. Nah, they got to go to college. They're mm-hmm. going to be a doctor. Man, we need mm-hmm. trades people. Like we don't even need to go down that road. That That's another hour long conversation. So we won't go there. Yeah. But give the kid a hammer. Yeah. Let him let him hit some stuff. He'll love it. Mm-hmm. It'll be great. Um, yeah. All right. I, I look, man, I you and I have spent way longer than this on the phone. So I know we can keep going, <laughs> but I, I got to stop. Yeah. Us. Um, where can people find you? Where can they uh, check out what you're doing? Um, you, you got a product on the market. Go ahead and plug that. This is your this is your you know little time to walk down the, the red carpet, seconds. do your interview. Yeah. Now uh, you can follow my company on uh, Facebook or Instagram at Diligence Flooring, um, or myself. You can send me a friend request or uh, David Sandana Facebook Instagram. Also, too, we have Ledgerboard Pro, is a tool that I created last year. Um, it's distributed by Gunlack Tools and uh, available at TNA, toolsforflooring.com, Tile Pro Source, uh, and tiletools.com. Um, so look it up on Google. It's uh, Ledgerboard Pro um, or on Ledgerboard Pro uh, on Instagram as well. Hey, man, if you're setting tile and you're doing backsplashes, just go buy it. I don't, I don't care what they charge for it. I don't even know what they charge. Just buy it. Because you don't yeah, have I to screw it. a board in the wall anymore. It, it's it's the ledger board you needed to hold the tile up over the stove. It's great. Yeah, you just set it there. You set it there. You install the tile. Then you lift it off. Yeah, anybody can do it. It only takes one hand. Um, you, know, you know, no damage and uh, easy to set up, easy to take down. 
that your brand new guy first day can set up a ledger board for your tile backsplash. <laughs> it's it's amazing the simplicity of mm -hmm. the things we realize we need and then what you can do with them. I love it. I, I love yeah. the people I've met in this industry and what they're doing and the the problems they're solving like it, it's amazing that something like this wasn't like honestly why didn't anybody come out with a thin piece of metal to put over this the place where the stove was pulled out 20 years ago 30 years ago it's not like this is a new problem why was everybody yeah, screwing been... a board in the wall like it's, it's just yeah, it's unbelievable have... i'm at a tile installer today um, I told you that I met these guys when I was at the bank. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyhow, I, I talked to him and I, I, uh, he came over to the truck. I gave him a business card. Uh, I figured I'd try to recruit him into employment. And um, I showed him the tool. I said, you seen this before? And he goes, no, what is that? And I said, how do you do your backsplashes? And he, he looks at the tool and he goes, I usually find some piece of wood and screw it into the wall and stuff. And I said, well, all you do is set that down on the countertops. And he goes, oh, that's what the 30s for. And he sets it like in front of me. He's looking, he goes, I'm going to buy one of these, you know, he's like, where can I get it? I said, TNA supply in Tacoma, Kent, <laughs> Bellevue, you can pick it up there. Um, they have them in stock and uh, give them the websites as well. That's so funny. And no, it's great. And see, you're out and about, you're networking, you're growing. Uh, that's you, you will continue to be successful. I know that. And it, it's great because you, you keep your ears open and down on the pavement and you're, you're looking for the opportunities and you're upfront, you're honest, you, you got integrity, all the things that are going to matter and, and grow a business. So, um, thank you for spending time with me. I very much appreciate it. Um, it's, it's great that, uh, you, it's late. <laughs> so I definitely appreciate you accommodating the schedule. Um, what do we got? Uh, check out flooracademypod.com. Um, if you are struggling with your numbers and you, you don't know what they are, you can go to the file section. I've got this awesome spreadsheet I made up on there. Um, if you're struggling with what to pay employees, there's a second spreadsheet on that spreadsheet that'll help you figure out what you should be paying employees. In my opinion, uh, you can help support the show. Go to patreoncom slash floor Academy, $5 a month can go a really long way in helping to support the show. You can find us on YouTube now that we're doing the live streams through the Facebook group. You can find us on any, um, pretty much any podcasting service. You know, we're on Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher. I don't know. Type in Floor Academy. You'll find us. If you're listening, you already found us. But um, that's, that's what I got. So here we go. We're going to close this out. Flooring Domain is an award-winning online flooring directory and service marketplace that helps you find more clients, grow your online presence and reputation or your brand. Whether you're a carpet store or flooring installer, perhaps a tile contractor, there are projects for everyone with a daily stream of clients visiting Flooring Domain and looking for experts like you. Flooring Domain offers a free listing option that allows you to find new client leads. You can set up a free account at Flooring Domain by visiting flooringdomain.com us have you ever tried to install lvp on steps only to struggle with the solution for the stair nose introducing snap caps by snap tech you simply send snap tech the exact lvp your client selects and they'll turn it into a perfectly matched stair nose that clicks flush into the tread plank for a simple and reliable solution visit www.snaptech.biz to learn more or order that's all I got for this week's folks. Thank you. Thank you again, David, for your time. And uh, I am sure we will chat again soon.